When Freedom's sons were on the march in California, it was his march. To the followers of Cesar Chavez, protesting the suffering of migrant workers, he said, though you may be old and bent from many years of labor, no man will stand taller than when you say, I was there, I marched with Caesar. Throughout the 1900s, farm workers suffered tragic working conditions in the Californian fields. After experiencing the conditions, Cesar Chavez strived for a solution. Chavez led the United Farm Workers of America and encouraged peaceful protests, including strikes and nationwide produce boycotts. A five-year-long grape boycott organized by Chavez ended triumphantly in 1970 when the United Farm Workers signed labor contracts with several produce farms. As a result of Cesar Chavez's perseverance through further demonstrations, the Agricultural Labor Relations Act was signed in 1975 establishing collective bargaining for farm workers at a California board which resolved problems pertaining to farm workers' rights. The law transformed the laborers' working environment by improving wages, giving health benefits, and providing access to facilities and clean water. In 1927, Cesar Chavez was born in Arizona. Soon after, the Chavez family became migrant farm workers when tragically the bank foreclosed on their home. Upon completion of eighth grade, Chavez dropped out of school to support his family by working in the fields full-time. In 1944, Chavez joined the Navy. During the 1930s, as Chavez was growing up, labor strikes varying from citywide strikes to factory takeovers occurred. In acknowledgement of the protests, Congress passed the National Labor Relations Act in 1935. The act gave employees the right to be involved with labor organizations and encouraged collective bargaining between employers and employees. However, this act did not include farm workers. So the National Labor Relations Act um, excluded um, agricultural workers, right, and domestic workers. And that wasn't an accident. Southern politicians didn't want to upset the racial or class order of their, um, of their states. When they decided to vote for this law at the federal level, they said, okay, we'll vote for this, but only if you exclude these workers. When Chavez returned from the Navy in 1946, he was reintroduced to tragic working conditions that farm workers tolerated. The job required backbreaking work with minimal clean water and few restrooms. Often growers sprayed dangerous pesticides over the fields while laborers toiled. Despite long hours, they received low wages. Additionally, when farm workers struck to be recognized as a union, strike breakers were brought in and picketers were met with violence. Chavez was infuriated with how minorities were treated. To aid workers, he joined the Community Service Organization, or CSO, in 1952. The CSO strived to improve Latino voting, working, and educational rights. After 10 years with the CSO, Chavez sought to create a union focusing on all farm workers' rights. In 1962, Chavez left the CSO and co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, or the NFWA, with Dolores Huerta. Over the next few years, organization members traveled around the country gaining supporters and observing farm workers' conditions. On September 8, 1965, hundreds of farm workers went on strike in the Delano area in further protest of conditions. On September 16, the NFWA agreed to participate. The only way for a strike to work is for you to be able to keep out all the other workers such that you put enough pressure on the employer and ultimately, hopefully, they lose enough money that they give into your demand. Later, demonstrators recognized that the progress was slow, so they asked consumers to boycott Shenley Vineyards. Nevertheless, not everyone agreed with Cesar Chavez and the UFW's protests. I just want to work, that's all. The Chavistas won't let you work unless you pay dues for the months you're at home. To draw national attention to the movement, the NFWA organized a march from Delano to Sacramento on March 17, 1966. This was a major triumph for the NFWA. Shenley Vineyards agreed to a contract guaranteeing better conditions, higher wages, and health benefits for its workers. On August 22, the NFWA combined with the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee. The leaders of the organizations, Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, 
Larry Itlong, and Philip Vera Cruz form the United Farm Workers of America, or the UFW. With many supporters, the UFW began widening the boycott to different corporations, including Gramera Vineyards. Due to declining profits, Guamara Vineyards began using other companies' labels to sell their grapes. As a result, the UFW began to spread the news across the country, instructing consumers to boycott all California table grapes, unless there was a UFW label on the package. By 1970, people across the nation participated in the boycott. On July 29th, Guamara Vineyards led about 150 Delano area table grape growers to sign the UFW's union contracts. These three-year-long contracts were a notable triumph for Chavez and the UFW because they signed 30,000 farm workers into the union and demanded that the growers provide resting periods, bathrooms, clean drinking water, and protective measures against pesticides. They also allowed the farm workers to negotiate. Chavez even declared, Hope was born among farm workers and their families. Black, brown, and white united in a spirit of self-respect and independence grew taking the place of fear and helplessness. In 1970, many Salinas Valley growers signed contracts with the Teamsters Union, a rival of the UFW. These new contracts merely increased the non-union wages by a dime and didn't offer health care benefits, housing, education, or protection against pesticides. Nick Jones, a UFW organizer, believed the growers signed with the Teamsters because it is much easier for the grower to sit across the table and negotiate with white Teamsters than with Chicano, Black, and Filipino representatives of the UFW. In response, 10,000 farm workers went on strike yet again on August 24th. After being prohibited from continuing to strike and picket through a court ruling, Chavez called for a boycott of Gallo wine and non-UFW lettuce and grapes. However, this new boycott aroused opposition. In December 1970, Superior Court Judge Campbell sentenced Chavez to 10 days in jail after Chavez refused to call off the boycott. We are going to continue to strike and we are determined to continue non-violently. Although he was arrested, he told his followers to boycott the hell out of him. Therefore, the protesting continued. In June 1975, a crucial triumph occurred. The Agricultural Labor Relations Board and Act were enacted to create justice in the fields by protecting and implementing the rights of farm workers. It gave farm workers the ability to associate with the labor union under the protection of a law. Finally, after ensuring that the act was enforced, Cesar Chavez ended the lettuce boycott in 1978. 17 million Americans were recorded to have participated in the boycott. Although Chavez triumphed by gaining improved working conditions, he remained concerned about the use of farm chemicals. In 1988, Chavez participated in a water-only fast, protesting the use of harmful pesticides. He finished his 36-day fast after his doctor cautioned him that continuing the demonstration could tragically result in his death. In 1993, Cesar Chavez passed away at age 66. To acknowledge Chavez's perseverance and triumphs, President Clinton posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom to Chavez in August 1994. In 2014, President Obama created a national monument and declared March 31st as a federal holiday in commemoration of Cesar Chavez. Chavez paved the way for acts such as the Better Agricultural Resources Now Act and the Pesticide Registration Improvement Act in 2018. This demonstrates that the pursuit to safe working conditions is an ongoing process. Because Cesar Chavez led the UFW to triumphant boycotts and strikes, farm workers have achieved better working conditions and now have unions in place to protect their rights. He persevered through tragic working conditions, arrests, and acts of malice, and emerged triumphant. Nonetheless, the UFW and other organizations are still working to defend farm workers by organizing demonstrations and continuing to fight through tragedies. Our world is a better place because Cesar Chavez decided to change it. Let us honor his memory, but most importantly, let's live up to his example. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede.